So we're seeing here Martin van Blokland, who competed for the Netherlands and the 2011 Under-23 Championships. He's on the far side. And Gabor Sisprigi, closest to us here on the right. A lightweight, guys. We have under, former Under-23 versus current lightweight. Internationally for Hungary since 2008. They're under starters with us. Way cleanly then in the Diamond Skulls Challenge Cup. And on the right of your pitcher, Gabor Sisprigi from Hungary. On the right, on the left, is Martin van Blokland from Netherlands, former under 23. And we talk about, about a gladiatorial nature of this competition and this event, but none more so than in the single skulls because you've only got yourself to blame if it all goes horribly wrong. One on one, you're right. This is the battle, and, and each here have clearly got something to prove. I think we've got the Hungarian lightweight scholar who's um, come to Henley to, to make a name and, and kind of play with the big boys, and we've got a real up and coming Dutch scholar as well who's wanting to make a name for himself. So, you know, there's a lot, this, this means a lot to these guys to be on this stage in front of this incredible crowd and trying to make some history. Just look at the flags on the far side, both scholars going into the reasonable head breeze now so as they transition into the steady race pace the closest to us here Sisprigi from Hungary continuing to overrate Martin van Blokland from uh, the Netherlands just taking it down easy now you'd expect though he's I mean sisprigi has got to keep it high he's the lightweight sculler between you compare the, the the weights here van Blokland 14 stone 5 and Sisprigi 11 stone and 7 so it is, you know, it's David and Goliath out there. It is, but in a way, this race sort of in itself epitomizes some, some of the sort of exciting battles you get within rowing, where you have very similar speeds sometimes from the top lightweights who raise a slightly different style and a slightly higher rate against the big heavyweights who've got a little bit more power and they may have some more gears, but over 2,000 meters, tactics and cunning comes into it and they are exactly demonstrating those, those challenges now. Gabor Sisprigi from Hungary, ninth at the European Championships earlier this uh, year. He was placed eighth in the men's lightweight single skull in the second rowing World Cup at Varese. So a seasoned pro out there, pushing it on now as the scholars head towards the first mark, which will be barrier. And it's looking like Gabor Sisprigi has just moved away, it opened it up here. The lightweight sculler from Hungary leading the heavyweight sculler from uh, Netherlands as we look down the course. And that's what Henley's all about as well, Cap, isn't it? Just great pictures down the course. Fantastic view. It's an amazing day. And for these two scholars to have their gladiatorial battle in such a setting, it's going to be an amazing race for them to remember and be a part of. Just an opportunity to uh, talk while we're looking at this. And quite back in the day, I'm sorry, I'm back in the day as well. OK, all right. <laughs> don't so, keep yeah, me. Don't, don't punish me. Um, you rode with uh, Catherine Granger. Okay, you're very close with her. Two years off, she's come back. Is she mad? She's Out a legend. She's, she's, she's got a year <laughs> to go to Rio. Can she do it? Will she do it? Well, the wonderful thing about sport is no one knows till you cross the line, and of course there are no guarantees, and, and she knows that, but you know, she's up for a challenge. If there's anyone who's up for a challenge and anyone who will find ways to make sure that they come out on top, then it's Catherine. And you know, I'm just so I have so much respect and admiration for what she's doing. Um, and she's already on the podium. I mean, it is not an easy ask coming in new. There isn't a sort of ready gold medalist waiting for you either. There's a big development project going on, but they've got momentum with them. And, you know, Catherine knows what it takes. And, and that's a huge thing to have sort of with you day in, day out. But it is not easy. Big challenge ahead. We look forward to watching all of that. I'm devastated that she's coming back to Rio because she would have been sitting beside us in the commentary box. Well, that's the reason. <laughs> you know, I would have thought it was a reason enough, really, to sit next to me over the next 12 months. She did tell me she was doing anything to get out of doing that, Gary. There you go. See, that's the drive, the ambition for an Olympic medal. As we're back now in the race, and look at the uh, overhead from the drone. It's just showing you the distance and how commanding that we're seeing uh, Gabor Sisprigi from Hungary open up five, six lengths of clear water. And remember, Gabor is the lightweight single sculler. Bags more experience, perhaps, given that he's been around representing Hungary at the uh, senior level since 2008 against the former under-23 
Scala from uh, Netherlands, but continues. And sometimes the lightweight Scala is just a little bit more mad, aren't they, really? They've got more to prove. I mean, they've always got more to prove, and there's nothing a lightweight Scala loves more than beating a heavyweight Scala. So um, certainly it wouldn't have been short of motivation. But I think maybe also there's, you know, the water is tricky out here, and there's a lot of boats that are, you know, the pleasure boats that are making this water tricky. And, and so sometimes they can sort of scull over the top of that a bit easier. They're a bit lighter. They're a bit sort of more able to transfer their body weight um, and, and sort of without slowing the boat down. And that looks to me like a lot what he's doing. Good technique that we're seeing from... Uh... Avos is bridgy. It's very in control. And tough to row into a headwind. I mean, again, when you're sitting on the start, do you think about the conditions that you've got with headwinds, or do you just have to deal with the conditions as you have, as you face them? I mean, we all train in all conditions, as you know, Gary. So, I mean, no one's phased by condition. You, you will make some adaptations, um, but you'll have done your training, you've done your race pieces, you'll have done everything in these conditions, and you know you know, what tools you've got in your toolbox, as it were, to, to deal with those. So, I mean, you know, we're an outdoor sport and, and we love the change of conditions and making sure we have the, the, the tools to, to overcome the elements. So Gabor Sesprigi from Hungary passing now the Upper Thames and Remenham Club on the left-hand side, about two-thirds of the way through this course, a course that measures 2,112 uh, metres from start to finish. It is a long and brutal place, particularly if you are Martin van Blocklen from Netherlands, former under-23 championship uh, sculler here, as he languishes some six lengths of clear water. It's a balmy evening here at Henley-on-Thames on this Saturday evening. There's still plenty of crowds out, appreciating what they're seeing out on the water, because it's still top quality stuff. And very, very different from the... And one of the attractions is that it's so different, Henley, from the multi-lane, six-lane racing that a lot of the international scholars face year in, year out. And that's one of the great charms of this place here, to really pit yourself against the best in the world, head-to-head, -head, psychologically. All of these scholars would have done pretty much the same training. It's a real feeling of sen on the psychological side being in command here. We're into the general enclosure here. This is the Diamond Skulls Challenge Cup semi-final and Gabos Isprigi from Hungary, pretty much from the barrier, has now led Martin van Blocklen from Netherlands, the former under-23 uh, Sculler. Dutch Sculler. This is just a delight here from Gabos Isprigi. Ninth of the European Championships uh, earlier this year, but Looking as though he's going to secure his place in the final of this event coming up tomorrow. And the final will be against Lawrence from Quinton Boat Club or Drysdale from West End Rowing Club, New Zealand. And Drysdale is better, Mahi Drysdale is better known to everybody as the Olympic champion. So what a race and what a prospect that we have in store for Gabor Sisprigi from uh, Hungary. Coming along now, the stewards' enclosure. You said this was David Gulup versus Goliath, but I think tomorrow is much more likely to be David versus Goliath, and he's probably going to want to conserve some energy for what's, for what's likely to, to lie ahead tomorrow. Still into the head breeze. But if you skull well, if your technique's good, you kind of almost don't feel the head breeze. You know, it's, it, if you let it get laboured and heavy, which is a bit what you can see in the, in the Dutch boat, it, you know, it almost looks as if there's more of a headwind against the Dutchman than there is against the Hungarian because of the style and the adaptation and the way he's able to keep things moving. Crowd appreciating a very fine display here of uh, sculling in the Diamond Single Skulls Challenge Cup, which is the top event, the open event for single skulls. Whatever plenty of uh, qualification but anyone in the world can enter this but only the very best go through gave us this Brigi from Hungary is proving that right now he is top of the form through to the final tomorrow and the applause for Martin van Blocklen from the Netherlands He's done very well to get through to the semi-final plenty of stories for him